Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming today. I'm Asar and I'm representing Seven Summits. So we at Seven Summits Studio have been making experimental games to bring a positive change in the society. Uh, our previous title, Petit, which highlighted the issues a woman goes through in developing countries, was received really well. Uh, it won a couple of awards and it also won an award at Casual Connect Asia last year. And following this success, for our next game, Picto, we decided to highlight the issues of domestic violence on little children through this game. So I'll be speaking about Picto a little later. But before that, let me tell you a bit about myself and why we are doing this or why we are making games for change. So I got into the video games industry because uh, games were a major part of my life. I've been playing a lot of games since the time I was a kid and even made a lot of friends who were interested in this medium back then. And roughly in these 15 years, I've seen video games change a lot. So there were several technological and graphical innovation that happened to video games. But along with this, there was one more thing that changed too. The people. The perception of people towards video games changed. And nowadays our general conversations are like this. So when I ask them about the recent AAA game that released, they say that they do not have 20 hours to play. Or some people say that they have uh, kids to look after or the game doesn't excite them. And some people have jobs to, to and, and other work to do. So, but, but interestingly, these people are still reading books and even watching movies, which made, which made me think for a while and then I did some research on the internet and came to know that in the case of books and movies, while people are transitioning from the teenage phase to the adulthood phase, they still stick to, the, to these mediums and they carry on doing, uh, interacting with these mediums for the rest of their lives. But when you compare it with the, in the case of games and comic books, uh, there's a slight change here. So when people are transitioning during the same phase, that is from teenage to adulthood, there is a small percentage of people which actually stop interacting with these medium and they never come back to it. So seeing this, I compared the genres of one of the most established entertainment medium, which are the movies, to that of video games. So when you compare the genres, uh, this is the results. So these are the genres of movies. And when you compare it with games, you actually see that video games are still missing out on a lot of content. And there's tremendous opportunity and possibility for us to explore uh, new content or even explore new to uh, topics through video games as a medium. And we at Seven Summits are highlighting societal issues in the documentary category. And th with this vision, we actually founded the studio in 2013. So coming to the book, The Art of Game Design, which is written by Jesse Shell, uh, the final chapter of this book is about your secret purpose which basically states that anyone who is involved in game design and development should roughly have a purpose or motivation to make games. But now the ironic part is that most of us don't even know why we are making games. And it's super important to stop and ask yourself the question, why am I doing this? Or why am I making video games? Because it is important to know uh, what you care about the most. So based on the motivation of game developers, they can actually be divided into different categories. And these are the artists, the fulfillers, the humanitarians, and the persuaders. So game developers can be divided into these four categories depending on the secret purpose. That is basically what motive do they have to make video games. So coming to the artist, uh, these people are, so when, when I say artist, these people are not the people who actually uh, do artwork for games or animation for video games, but these are the people who see video games as an art form. And, and there's this place, which I refer to as the proto world, 
where objects are present in pure conceptual form. So these artists basically see right through it. They get a remarkable concept. They then work and work on it and they bring it to reality. So this is the main goal of the artist is to get an object from the proto world to reality. And this is where it ends. So let me show you the functioning. So we have an artist there. This is the proto world and this is reality. And their goal is to get concepts from the proto world to reality. And this is where it ends. So one of the remarkable thing that differentiates artists from other game developers is that they don't really care what other people think of the final product or sometimes they don't themselves care what other people what what they think about the their final product as well so coming to the next set which are the fulfillers so these people create engaging experiences so that symbol there is that of an engaging experience and they bring it to mass gamers and most of the game de developers uh, generally belong to this category where they make games for uh, the mass number of people the third category are the humanitarians and these people want to create a positive change in the society or highlight a social issue through video games so here's a positive change symbol and they again uh, bring it to people in need and that's and the fourth category are the persuaders and these people care about the money and so whom do they bring money to they bring it to themselves so these are roughly the four categories of game developers depending on their motivation so if you want to actually unlock new genres in video games the key thing here is to actually get all these four categories together and make a functional loop out of it and that is where the true potential of video games unlock according to me so here's how you do it so the fulfillers and the humanitarians come together to create engaging and helpful games but now the thing is that if uh, these games are really for a niche audience and you have to make it really remarkable and that is where the artists come in comes in so the artist brings a remarkable concept from the proto world and they give it to these people which again is given to the gamers or the people in need and this is an ideal way where you can actually make engaging games uh, with a positive message but if you see this the entire loop is incomplete and and the key to solve this puzzle are the persuaders so these people invest money for making the game and they get the revenues from the players and if this loop is fully functional you can create engaging helpful transformational games which is the key forward so with this uh, let me tell you a little bit about the games that we make and one of them is picto so in the game you play as a little kid who finds himself in an abusive family situation and in this game we try to highlight the issues of domestic violence on the mindset of children and we do it through the visuals and the storyline of the game so let me play the gameplay trailer so that you know more about the game
Uh, so in the game, you basically control this little kid who one fine day gets fed up of the domestic violence or the issues that is happening at his place. So he decides to go out to find some peace. And he explores the town outside his house and even the countryside. So <clears throat> in the game, there are certain intervals where the kid writes letters to his parents. So in the letters, he actually mentions how he feels when his parents fight. So here's one such incident where he's writing a letter to his parents telling them about the fights that happen in his school, but it is never as bad as those that happens at his house. <clears throat> and now one key thing that we do here is that we give the players an opportunity to send this particular message as an SMS to their friends and family members. And in this way, we are not just raising an awareness about domestic violence, but we are also converting players into social activists as they are raising a voice against it. And this particular feature also helps us in marketing the game. So we highlight the issues of domestic violence. We convert players into social activists. So by as they are raising a voice against domestic violence and this particular feature is helping us in marketing the game, which is really good. So while we were beta testing the game uh, on online forums and portals, uh, here's one of the feedback that we got for Picto and I'll read it out for you. So one lady says, Picto is a touching experience. This reminded me of the trauma I went through when my parents got divorced. I would make sure that at least my children do not undergo such pain. So when you read reviews like this, uh, it gives a whole new meaning to what you're doing. And, and to see that your game is making some change in the society, which is a really a good thing. So for people who actually want to get into games, games for change, there are certain resources that would help you do that. So the first thing is Playmob, which I'll talk to you. So, so Playmob is basically an API that you can integrate to your game. And if it's a free to play game, a certain percentage of that revenues would go to charities around the world. And there are just 144 companies registered in this organization and they have raised over $1 million through that for charities around the world. So it can even work for generic games and it, your game doesn't have to have a social message to integrate this API. Uh, the second thing is an accelerator program that is in USA. So these people take in companies or incubate companies who are making such games and they invest in $50,000 initially uh, if you're selected. And yeah, so they, they have a program that runs every six months and they incubate seven companies in every round. And the final thing is Games for Change which is an annual conference that happens in New York City every year. So if you want to know more about such games or uh, interact with people who belong to this particular domain, uh, you can visit this conference or their website, gamesforchange.com. So now, games are the most interesting mediums of our time because when you talk about books and movies, it is always about places or characters or plots. But video games are all about I. For example, if I solve a puzzle, I say that I have solved the puzzle, or I have helped my partner, or I overcame that obstacle. And because of this unique ability of video games to give you a first person experience psychologically, it can create a much more deeper impression and help drive a positive change. So the planet is now spending more than 3 billion hours a week playing games. And if a noticeable amount of them were actually designed to prevent sadness or to create a positive change in the life or to create real widespread happiness, it can indeed be one of the most respectable mediums too. Thank you. Does the floor have any questions for Azar? Oh, yes. Uh, movie is more on a third person, it's more on a place, plot, and game is more on the 
I. Yes. Um, how how um, how do you, can you explain again? Uh, how how does it uh made it more deeper than it is a movie? Yeah, see, so in the case of movies, you are actually seeing from a third person view. Okay. And there are certain characters in those medium who are making those choices. But when it comes to video games, okay. it is you yourself who is making that choice to bring a change. And okay. if there are mu- if there are multiple endings, your choice actually affects the layout of the game. So it affects you more deeply that yes, you have done it instead of some other person doing it. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Actually, I have one question. Yes. So, what is the biggest challenge you faced um, while thinking of creating social ch- uh, social change or good? Okay. In, so, in so, so the topics that we pick up is uh, are basically are basically there in our surroundings itself. So, domestic violence was there in in the neighbor's house, and that is how we decided to put it in. So, the base the major challenge that we face at the moment is obtaining revenues. So the target audi- the target audience is super niche, and it becomes really difficult. So we contact a couple of NGOs who are willing to invest in the games. So coming coming up with the issues is really simple because there are tons of issues out there, but getting revenues through the target audience is the difficult part. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much, Azar.